All right, so guys, my name is Patricia. Everybody say hi, Patricia. Hi, hi, Patricia. And I am here with my friend Alfie. Everybody whisper, hi, Alfie. Hi, Alfie. And he does not love super loud noises, so exactly the way you guys are sitting right now, this is absolutely perfect. So like she mentioned, um, Alfie is from the Creature Conservancy, and it sounds like all you guys are experts on the Creature Conservancy. I even see a couple of campers from the summer uh, in the audience, so some of you guys might have already met Alfie. But he is a very, very cool skunk. We have not had him for very long. Our other skunk, Stinky Pete, is retired. He is about 12 years old, and skunks only live to be about 15 years old. So at 12, we decided it was time for him to get a little break uh, and let our younger skunk, Alfie, start to do some of the work. So I'm gonna pull him out. He is very, very cute. If you guys just can't believe how cute it is and you feel the need to say something, then cover your mouth with your hands so we're not making noise and stressing him out. All right, guys, so as I bring out this skunk, first of all, I don't want you guys to worry because he's not going to spray you. You guys have all heard that skunks can take care of themselves and protect themselves with a really stinky spray out of their back end. You guys have all heard that? Yeah, so this guy is not able to spray. He had a surgery. It's kind of like when your cat or dog gets neutered, uh, and we took out the glands. We took out the little organs in his body that produce that stinky spray. So don't worry, he is not going to spray anybody. If he could spray, that would be a really, really good way for him to stay safe because it's kind of irritating. It gets in your eyes and it stings and it makes you smell really, really bad. Now, if you can imagine being a predator and trying to sneak up on a prey item or on a prey animal, if the prey animal can smell you coming and it knows to run away and hide, you're gonna have a really hard time finding your food, right? So that is one of the ways that skunk spray helps to keep them safe. They can start to spray when they're only about five days old. So no matter how teeny tiny a skunk that you see is, it's still gonna be able to spray. And they can't just spray once, they can spray about five times. So don't think that they're empty just because they might have sprayed you once. Now, Alfie the skunk uh, is not a rescued animal. You guys might know that some of the animals at the Creature Conservancy are rescued from people who maybe got them as pets and then figured out it wasn't such a great idea, or maybe rescued if their mom gets hit by a car or is in an accident or something like that. Alfie actually came from a breeder. So in the state of Michigan, there are a lot of laws to help keep our native animals safe. People shouldn't be going out into the wild and collecting wild animals when they're babies and bringing them into their homes and trying to take care of them because it can be really, really hard to take care of some of these animals. And so one of the laws here in Michigan is that if you have a native animal in your house, you have to have a special permit for it and you're not allowed to breed it. So Alfie here actually came from the one place in Michigan where it is legal for them to breed skunks. Uh, and we got him when he was just a little baby because sometimes if you were to try to work with an adult skunk who's maybe already been around people for a little while, he might not enjoy being around people so much. He might have had some traumatic experiences or kind of a tough time. That means he'd be very scared and uncomfortable in a room full of kids. So we wanted to get a baby skunk so that he would be okay with meeting kids just like you guys. And so that's why we went and we got Alfie from that skunk breeder uh, up a little bit further north in Michigan. Now the reason that for skunks it's actually illegal to rescue them from the wild is because of rabies. Have you guys heard of rabies? Yeah, you might have heard of that. It's a very dangerous disease that animals can pass on to one another through their saliva. So if you were to be bitten by a skunk, you'd have to go to the doctor and make sure that you didn't catch any rabies from that skunk or from any other wild mammal. But here in Michigan, um, skunks actually do carry rabies sometimes. So you have to be very, very careful when you encounter a skunk out in the wild uh, or if somebody has a skunk that maybe didn't come from the kind of situation where they should come from. You gotta be very, very careful to keep yourself safe and to keep the other animals that you work with safe. So we're very glad to have Alfie here and to have him um, from a place where we know he's very healthy and he grew up the right way and only had positive experiences with people because it means we get to talk to you guys about how awesome skunks are. If you guys look at this little guy, you're going to see he's hanging onto my shirt with some really, really long claws. This guy has got super long nails and in the wild, he would love to use those nails for digging holes. He would be digging holes in the dirt looking for tasty snacks. Can anybody raise their hand and tell me a tasty snack that he might find in the ground? What do you think? Uh, maybe worms. worms, that's a very tasty snack he would find in the ground. What do you think? Bugs. Other kinds of bugs? Totally, this guy loves to eat worms and bugs. What do you think? Berries. Berries, yeah, he loves to eat berries. Bugs and berries and worms. I'm gonna take one more in the back, yeah. What do you think? Maybe. 
Termites, yeah, that's a good one. So this guy is a generalist. That means in general, he'll eat pretty much anything. So he loves to eat worms, he loves to eat bugs, he likes to eat fruits and vegetables like berries. Um, or he could dig up some sweet potatoes or some potatoes or peanuts, anything he can find growing in the ground, he would love to eat. He also likes to scavenge. Do you guys know what it is to scavenge? Yeah. What is it? Can you tell us? It's things that were already found by somebody else, so he doesn't have to work to find Yeah, if another animal has killed something and started to eat it, Alfie would love to find that and to clean up the leftovers. And if you look really closely at his face, poking out from his mouth, you are also going to see he has very long, very long sharp teeth uh, there in the front. So those long, sharp teeth are things that he could use to hunt himself. If he wanted to catch something like a little frog or a lizard or maybe a small bird, then he would be quite happy to do a little bit of hunting himself in the wild. So this guy will eat pretty much anything. Most of the time, uh, places with lots of people also have lots of skunks because we do these awesome things like cutting the crusts off of our bread and putting it outside in the garbage and putting out bowls of food and water for our cats and dogs outside. And that's just free food for a skunk. They are happy to dig through garbage cans and look for leftovers and scraps and things like that. And it means that pretty much everywhere where there's people, there's going to be a pretty healthy population of skunks. But you might not see them because they're not active during the day. They're only active during the night. So does anybody know what that's called when an animal is active at night instead of the day? Yeah. You. Nocturnal. Nocturnal. Now I want you guys to all say the word crepuscular. Crepuscular. And say it again. Crepuscular. Crepuscular. Yeah, that's actually what skunks are. It's kind of in between being active during the day and active in the night. They're active at dawn and dusk. That's when they're most active. They're tooling around. They're looking for food. They're hiding from predators. And that's what skunks are. So if you guys are up a little bit late after the sun has started to go down and you keep a close eye out, that is the time of day you're most likely to see a skunk. Now this particular skunk is, as I told you guys, he's just a little baby. He's about six months old. He already looks pretty big. And part of that is that we're headed into winter. So in the winter here in Michigan, it gets pretty cold, doesn't it? And these skunks are not curled up inside of a house. They are outside. They might be in a den or a log in a little burrow. And so in order to get ready for the winter, this guy has put on some weight. This guy will add about half of his body weight on top of what he already weighs every fall. So if he weighed six pounds in the summer, in the winter he's going to weigh nine pounds. So that he's got some fat, he's got an extra coat of fat on, and if it gets really, really cold and he can't find any food, he's got a little bit of weight to spare. So as I'm petting him here, you can see he kind of jiggles. This is a very fat skunk right now. Um, but he's all geared up for the winter, so we're not worried about it and we don't have him on a diet or anything like that. Now guys, does anybody have a quick question? I'm going to take two or three quick questions before we get our next group in here. Yeah? Um, what was the owner's name? The owner's name? So the person that he came from, his name was Mr. Woods. Mr. Woods, the only skunk breeder in Michigan. Yeah? How many skunks do we have? We have two. We have Alfie the skunk and we have Stinky Pete the skunk. We can't touch him. I'm sorry. We've got to be very, very careful about what hands kind of come near his face. We don't want him to feel scared or overwhelmed or like he has to protect himself. Yeah. Is he like, kind of like an omnivore? He is an omnivore. Yeah, that's exactly right because some of the food he eats is meat and some of it's fruits and vegetables. Now that means that some people who do try to keep skunks in their house as pets uh, don't feed them a very good diet because you've got to do a lot of research. And we th when you think about all the different things that skunks eat in the wild, are most people going to go out and find frogs and fish and termites and worms to feed their skunk in their house? No, no most people feed them something like cat food or dog food, which is enough for them to kind of get by, but it doesn't mean they're super duper healthy. So the diet that these guys really need can be a little bit tough to provide if they're being kept in a house. So it's something you've got to be really, really careful about and make sure you're doing a lot of research to have a skunk in your house. Yeah. Yeah, they would definitely like to steal from a vegetable garden. Yeah, but if there's not a fence around it, they'd love to get in there and eat some of the fruits and veggies. Yeah. He's a boy. Yep. Yeah. What kind of skunk is it? He's a striped skunk. So you guys see he's got, his stripes are very wide. He's got a very luxurious fur coat here. But his two stripes are here and here, and then they meet up again down by his, by his butt. Yeah. 
when did you get him? When did we get him? We got him about five months ago. So we've had him for almost his whole life, since he was a little tiny baby. Yeah. How old is he? He's about six months old. So he's not fully grown yet. He's going to get almost twice this big. So right now he is about six pounds, and by the time he's all done growing, he's going to be about 10 pounds in the summer, and then more in the winter. Yeah. How old is he? How old is he? Does anybody know? Can anybody raise their hand and tell us how old he is? Yeah. Six months old. That's really good listening. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what, what's his favorite food? His favorite food? This little guy loves peanut butter. Now, peanut butter is pretty fatty, so he can't have very much of it. Uh, but peanut butter and mealworms are his two favorite foods. Do any of you guys like peanut butter? Do any of you guys like mealworms? No? You have one? Good for you. <laughs> That's good protein. Yeah. How do we care for him? So that's a really good question. Um, this guy has got a big room all to himself, and when we started putting him in that room, we had to skunk proof it. So we had to make sure that the walls were coated with a special coating so that he couldn't literally dig through the walls. Um, if there were carpet like this on the floor, he'd be happy to dig through that with these long claws. These guys are really active and they need a lot to do, so they need toys to play with. They like to steal things and take them back to their den. So if there's anything soft on the ground, he'll take it and he'll run back to his bed with it. Um, so we put soft things in different places for him to rearrange. We have different kinds of substrate. So what that means is there's some parts of his room that have gravel on the floor for him to dig in. There's some parts of his room that have hay or might have straw or might have some shavings like horse bedding. So he has lots of different things to walk around on and to smell and to dig on uh, because they like to stay very busy. When they're awake and when they're active, they're smelling for things to do and they're, they're looking for things to destroy. So they can be very, very destructive animals when they find find something that they want to chew a hole in or dig a hole in. A lot of people run into problems with having skunks and trying to also have furniture. You can kind of either have a skunk or you can have furniture because they will dig up into your sofa or pull the upholstery out of your chairs because it's fun for them. That's a good game for a skunk. Yeah? Do they like to steal like shiny things kind of like raccoons do? This guy doesn't. They're not as into shiny things. They do really like soft things, though. I think it's that instinct to really get ready for the winter. They're trying to fill their den with, uh, with warm, cozy things. But I'm going to have to experiment with that a little bit and see what he likes, because we, we don't give him access to too many shiny things. All right, guys, we've got time for probably one more question. Yeah. Yeah. So he was born in captivity. We didn't take him out of the wild because in Michigan it's actually illegal to take skunks out of the wild. All right, great questions. You guys were a super good audience, but I think we do have a couple more groups to rotate through. So if you can stay seated and stay quiet until Alfie has gone back in his cage, in his enclosure. Come on, buddy. I do have a skunk kit to show you guys. His name is Alfie. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about skunks in the wild and kind of what their lifestyle looks like. And then I'll tell you a little bit about how we take care of skunks at the Creature Conservancy. And you guys will have to think about whether that's the same as the story or different from the story. There might be some things that we have in common and some things that we do a little bit differently. So are you guys ready? Yep. All right. Are you all set? Super. All right, so this is Alfred, or Alfie, as we like to call him, and he is a striped skunk. So as I walk around, you guys are going to notice a couple different things about him. You're going to notice he's got this really long, thick fur all down his back. And having that really long, thick fur is, uh, is really good for him for a couple reasons. So for starters, he would be native here in Michigan, as well as other areas of North America. And as you guys are well aware, it gets really cold here in the winter, right? So this really thick fur on the skunk is going to help keep him warm throughout the winter. He's also going to put on a little bit of weight in the winter to stay toasty warm. The other thing that you guys notice about his fur is it's black and white, right? Mm -hmm. Now here, the woods in Michigan, are they black and white? No. no. Is he camouflaging in the woods? No. No, he is not. 
that black and white coloring is actually trying to make him stand out. He wants all the predators to know exactly where he is and stay far, far away from him. So what he would do in the wild if he felt threatened is he would try to look really big and he would try to make a little bit of noise. He might stomp his foot, he might growl or scream. They can actually make a screaming noise, which is pretty creepy. Uh, and he would try to tell that predator Hey, I'm here, look at me and leave me alone. And if the predator doesn't leave him alone, what's he going to do? Spray. He's going to spray, exactly. Now this particular skunk, you guys don't have to be afraid, he's not going to spray. Um, he doesn't have his scent glands anymore. But in the wild, that spray keeps the predators far, far away from him because nobody likes the smell of skunk spray, even predators. And it doesn't just smell really bad and warn all the prey animals in the forest where the predator is when the predator stinks like skunk spray. But it will also get in your eyes and kind of irritate your eyes and it's a little bit painful. So there's a lot of reasons to leave a skunk alone if you see one out in the wild. Now this little guy, if he lived in the wild and he were kind of doing his thing, staying safe from predators with his warning colors and with his spray, he would be living the high life. This guy has got long, long claws that he's using to hang on to my shirt. And I want to show you guys, oops, he took my mic off. I want to show you guys those claws because those are what he would be using to dig in the wild. He would be digging for food. So what kind of food would he be digging for under the ground? What do you think? Um, I think Yeah, he loves to eat bugs and he loves to eat creepy crawlies. Uh, so those long claws would be really good for digging up bugs and worms and long things that he could put in his mouth. You guys see those long claws? Now what else? Hey guys, voice is off. Raise your hand if you have an idea of something else he'd like to eat in the wild. Yeah, what do you think? Raspberries and cherries. He does. He loves fruit. He likes the sweet fruit that he might find on bushes. What do you think? Um, maybe if he like finds um find any leaves, he will eat it. Yeah, some leaves maybe. Yeah, he eats kale and lettuce and things like that. Vegetables. Yeah. Wild berries. What about protein? Do you think he likes to eat any other meats other than bugs? What do you think? Uh, snakes. Snakes? He would eat a snake, actually. If he could find a snake, he would be happy to eat it. Yeah. Rats? Rats? He would love to eat a little rodent. Yeah. Mouse? Rats and mice? Yeah. Yeah, so bugs are a good protein source. So he would like to eat all of these things. Skunks will eat just about anything. They like to eat fruits and vegetables. They like to eat insects. They like to scavenge. So if there's something that a bigger animal has maybe already caught and killed, Alfie will happily come and clean up the leftovers. Things like lizards and frogs, uh, little amphibians like that, he would be happy to eat. So when they're babies, you can feed them something like puppy formula or kitten formula, but a grown-up skunk needs a lot of variety in its diet. It needs to eat lots and lots of different things. Otherwise, they're prone to getting obese. They are very, very prone to being overweight in captivity because a lot of people don't realize how much variety they need to eat and how much exercise they need. In the wild, this guy would spend a lot of his time roaming around and foraging for food. He would be digging. He would be searching for different things that he could eat. He would be chasing his prey and trying to catch it and that's a really different lifestyle than living in a room and having somebody put a bowl right in front of you every single day with a high calorie meal in it right so in captivity these guys need a lot of enrichment they need a lot of toys they need things to dig in and that's what we have for Alfie at the Creature Conservancy is we have a room for him with lots of different toys. We have things that we're okay with him shredding up into little pieces because they're very destructive animals. They have very, very sharp teeth. Um, and he is quite pleased to shred up a stuffed animal or a little piece of furniture or dig a hole on a carpet or a rug like this. That's a really fun activity for him. And we like to make sure that he's able to kind of do all those things he would do in the, nat in the natural world. And he can dig and he can shred things up and he can look for his food. So he gets fed twice a day and one of those feedings will actually just scatter the food around so he really has to look for it.
Now this particular skunk, Alfie, um, he is not from the wild. He is from a breeder. So in the state of Michigan, it's illegal to take skunks out of the wild. If you find a native animal, um, you have to take it to a rehabilitator. You have to take it to somebody who's going to try their best and use all their knowledge and their expertise to let it go back into the natural environment. For skunks, they are actually carriers of rabies in Michigan. Have you guys heard of rabies? Yeah, so rabies is a really serious disease. It can make you very sick, and it's carried in an animal's saliva. So if an animal bites you and you get a little bit of animal spit on you, you should go to the doctor and make sure that you don't have rabies. And here in Michigan, because skunks frequently carry rabies, um, it's actually not allowed to take them from the wild, even if you're going to try to let them go. So if you see a skunk out in the wild, the best thing you can do for it is just leave it alone. So if we didn't get Alfie from the wild, where does that mean he came from? What do you think? If you didn't get him from the wild, um, then that means you got him from a breeder. We got him from a breeder, exactly. So he came from the one person in the state of Michigan who is uh, legally licensed to breed skunks. So we got him when he was just a little baby skunk. He was just about a month old, uh, and he is now six months old. So we had him for about five months. He is shredding my shirt, a little demonstration there of how destructive they can be. Um, so he's about six months old now. He's not all the way grown up yet. Uh, and because he was born in captivity, because he came from a breeder, he loves people. Right, we didn't want to get an animal that might already be scared of people and be, would be really stressed out if it came into a classroom with lots of kids. <laughs> we wanted to get an animal that's only had good times with people and knows that nobody here wants to hurt him. So that's one of the reasons that we're very glad to have Alfie and very glad to be able to bring him here to classrooms with people like you guys and talk about how even though skunks have a nasty, stinky reputation, they're very, very cool animals with a really interesting lifestyle. Now, does anybody have any questions about Alfie? Yeah. Well, um, the rule about skunks, is that the one you're asking about? Why did they make that rule about skunks? Yeah. Yeah, so the rule about skunks was just made to keep people safe. So it is legal to have a pet skunk in Michigan. You just have to get a permit from the government. And you have to have a veterinarian who knows how to treat skunks and knows what vaccines to give them and how old they need to get their different vaccines. So it's a little bit of work and it's a little bit of paperwork. And then when you do want your pet skunk, you would have to get it from a breeder, from the one breeder in the state who, who is legally able to make them. So it is possible, but the reason that they make it hard is just because they want to keep people safe. It's because they don't want people to be exposed to diseases that wild animals might be carrying. Uh, and they don't want wild animals to be put into situations that aren't really fair to them where they're being taken from the wild. So it's just to keep people safe. As far as what rubies are made of, that's probably a, a question for your science teacher. Maybe. Yeah. I hope that you're not wearing one of your favorite shorts because that skunk is just killing the floor. Oh, don't worry. This shirt is already missing several buttons because the parrots that we take on presentations are also super destructive. So we plan for that. <laughs> yeah. So this skunk, we got him from that breeder when he was about a month old. So he was really, really small and tiny. He was just done bottle feeding. And he's now about six months old. So he's still not all the way grown up. Right now he's about six pounds. And when he's done growing, he'll be about 10 pounds. So he'll get almost twice this big, twice this heavy. Yeah. I know he's not going to do it, but how far can he spray? How far could he spray? If he still had his spraying glands, he could spray 10 feet. So like probably from me to the camera, he could spray me if I were that far away. Yeah. Why do animals have Why do they have, oh, rabies? Why do they, oh, got it. <laughs> uh, how do they get it? So they can get it from other animals that carry it. Um, and it's something that they might carry and it might not actually make them sick. So from looking at an animal, you won't always know if it has rabies or not. Yeah, it might just be in their saliva and then if you get it, you might get sick. Yeah. Um, so I know he grew really fast, didn't he? Like so if you think about that, if an animal in the wild is born in April or May, is born in the spring, 
Here in Michigan, what starts to happen in September and October? Go really fast. It gets really cold, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the animals that are born in the spring in the northern hemisphere or in the, the southern parts of the southern hemisphere, in places where we have really strong seasons, they have to grow up pretty quickly. They have to put on a lot of body weight or they have to stay really close with their parents in order to survive the winter. So this guy, if he were in the wild, he would have separated from his mom by now. He'd be doing his own thing as a skunk, uh, and he would need to survive the winter on his own. So he had to grow really fast and get really fat in order to do that. All right. Yeah? What's its closest relative? His closest relative? So his closest relative would be like a, a badger. Yep. A badger or a polecat, something in that family. I know. Uh, yeah, your question. Why did the breeder want to give give that skunk away? Oh, because that's his job. He breeds skunks and he sends them to zoos and nature centers and people who have permits to have them. I know that's an interesting career path, isn't it, skunk breeder? Yeah. Um, like, would he ever use like, his claws sometimes to break open walnuts? Um, he might use his claws or he might use his teeth to break into nuts. If you guys look, he's got some pretty long teeth poking out of his mouth. You've not seen. I'm going to point his face towards you guys again. Keep a close eye on his mouth because he does have two long white teeth poking down there on the sides. You guys see him? What is he, a vampire? What is he, a vampire? Shh, all right, guys, I believe there's one more class that's going to meet Alfie today, so I'm going to put him back in his crate. I can't see. Oh, this is it. Awesome. Perfect. Then we've got time for a couple more questions. What's your question? How did his stinkers come off? How did his stinkers come off? So he had a surgery. Uh, our veterinarian, Dr. Marsh, did surgery and removed them. So the organs where he mixes up his skunk spray in order to spray it at his uh, enemies have been removed. So he's not even making it anymore. So this is a very good, clean-smelling skunk. Yeah. Um, how long can they live in captivity? That's a great question. So they usually live for about 15 years in captivity. Uh, and this guy's only six months old. So he's quite young. He's got a ways to go. We do have another skunk at the Creature Conservancy named Stinky Pete. And Stinky Pete is about 12 years old. So he is now retired. We don't send him on programs anymore. We just let him kind of dig and, and live out his days uh, doing, doing stuff in his free time. Yeah. Yeah. How small was he when we first got him? So let's see. When we first got him, hang on, buddy. He was about that big. He was really teeny tiny small. Yep, he was about 300 grams, which is very, very small. Now, guys, skunks are found all over North America and down into Central America. But in Central America, the skunks that you find are like in northern Mexico. You wouldn't find skunks that get as big. In cold places, animals have to have a bigger body with more fat in order to survive the winter. But in the tropical areas and places where there's not a really cold winter, they don't need to get quite as big. And so that's where you're going to find animals with smaller body sizes, even skunks that look just the same as him, but smaller. Yeah? Does Stinky Pete and that skunk live together? They don't live together, no. So they live separately. In the wild, skunks are solitary. So they like to live by themselves. Uh, and so Stinky Pete and this guy would just argue if they live together. So sometimes we'll switch them. So we'll have Stinky Pete in one room, and we'll have Alfie in another room, and we'll switch them so they can smell the other skunk. And they can kind of think about what it might mean for them if another skunk was in the area. But we don't ever put them together because we don't want them to, to argue. Yeah. Um, the breeder has been breeding skunks for 40 years. So his initial set of skunks, I'm not sure. He might have gotten them from a zoo or from a nature park. Or maybe when he got them, it was legal to take skunks out of the wild. But he's been doing it for a really long time. So he's um, been doing it since my papa was born. Probably. He's 40 years old. Could be. That sounds plausible. So All right, guys. What do you think? Is the care for the skunk in the story similar to the care that Alfie gets, or is it yeah. different? Yeah, it's similar? Yeah, no. Does it eat the same foods? Yeah, yeah. No. It, yeah, because when it's a baby, it ate um, dog, dog, um, puppy, puppy formula, puppy formula, 
and kin formula and that's exactly what they do look. So I feel like it's pretty um like the same because um because they they got they got it from um they got it from a place that's licensed to get skunks. Um they take care of it in an area where they can still shred things and 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 they still feed him food that he is allowed to have. So I feel that he is um that he um that the scale they gave to the real skunk is the same as the one they did in the book and I feel like maybe um maybe that um maybe something the maybe the breeder who gave you that the, that gave the teacher can tell me that um your skunk maybe it might have like wrote the book because maybe he actually like the person who wrote the book actually had a skunk. Yeah, and so they kind of knew what the what the process looked like. Very cool. All right, guys, I'm going to put Mr. Alfie away before he actually shreds my shirt. Uh, but thank you very much. You guys were an excellent audience.